morning and welcome towards Dello. I want to uh, thank everybody for joining me on Facebook Live as well as free conference call. And uh, I just wanted to share, uh, take a few minutes to share a word with you from 2 Timothy chapter 4 and uh, beginning in verse 2. Before we do that, let's just pray to the Lord Father in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that you break open the word of God. This Holy Spirit should come and lead us and guide us into all the truth. Help us to see more clearly, to understand more fully, and help us, Lord, especially to be not hearers only, but doers of the word of God. We can bring forth your kingdom upon this earth and make a, an eternal difference in everything we say and do in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In 2 Timothy chapter uh, 4, starting in verse 2, he said this, Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the faith, from the truth, and be turned outside the fable. But you be watchful in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. I tell you, we, we, we're we seeing this fulfilled uh, today in, in a lot of ways. And uh, when we look at the condition of of the, the things in the, in the church today, uh, we're seeing this. People don't endure in sound doctrine. In fact, uh, uh, just just uh, in the past couple of weeks, they had some uh, things on the on the major news networks about the, the, the church that uh, we have the uh, fewest uh, church goers, believers, uh, in, 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 in forever. I mean, it's just uh, uh, the, the percentage of people that uh, uh, profess Christ and live for Christ and, and go to church has been declining for many years now. We're at a very low point right now. And I, I believe that a lot of what's going on today has to do with the fact that we have gotten away from preaching the true word of God. We have so many churches that you go and they tell stories and they, you know, just kind of, I mean, I've, I've been in churches where they've read from secular magazines and, and things like this. Listen, the only way people get saved and people are, lives are going to be changed is by the word and the spirit. If we're not going to allow the word and the spirit to operate in the church and focus on that, we're not going to. We're not going to make any effect. We're not going to do anything. We're not going to produce anything that's eternal, and that's our problem. We we have done that, and and you know Paul was was uh, exhorting Timothy in Second Timothy to, to, that this was the, the this was the primary thing. This was the focus that he was to do uh, as a minister. Because remember, Jesus called every one of us to be fishers of men. We are called to make disciples. We are called, no matter what. Uh, uh, area that God puts us in, and what what gifts and anointing and and calling He has upon us, it all centers around the same exact thing. That every single child of God, it's like John, Jesus said in John chapter nine, we didn't choose Him; He chose us. He chose us. Why did He choose us? He chose us because He is going to appoint us to go and bear fruit. That we would be fishers of men. That we would make disciples of all peoples. That we would. Preach the gospel to every creature. So, so Paul's exhorting Timothy, this is what you need to be about. This should be the focus of your ministry. Preach the word. Be ready at all times to, to preach the word. Was in season right? Doesn't make it. You just preach the word because you never know what God is doing. You never know who is uh, uh, where people's hearts are and who God is moving upon and working upon to hear that word that's going to produce a uh, fruit. And 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 uh, and to labor at it, to be serious about it, be be uh, uh, you know, put all your heart into it. He's saying, convince them, rebuke them, exhort them with long suffering, with teaching. In other words, the idea is to get the word into people, uh, because until the word gets into the heart, until the word is received with revelation into the heart of God by the work of the Holy Spirit, it's not going to produce anything. And unfortunately, we got churches filled with people that there's no fruit. There, there's nothing happening. Why? Because again, we don't preach the word. We do everything except we, we we're afraid to preach the true word of God today. We 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 have all these excuses. Well, uh, people won't come. People don't want to hear that. Well, 
the, the, the church was built on the word of God and the working of the Holy Spirit. I mean, they preached the word at the very beginning. They went from a little group of people from 12 to 120 to, to, to thousands and into millions in just a few centuries. There were millions of Christians all across the world because they did what Jesus said. They, they preached the word of God. And, and uh, again, you can't, you know, it's not about being seeker friendly. That's what we talk about here in, in verse three. The time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine. Why don't they endure sound doctrine? Because we don't give it to them. We don't feed it to them. Uh, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. They, 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 there's a lot of people that just want to get what they want. They want a smooth word. They want to hear good things. They don't want to hear the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so uh, we, we need to preach the word because what's happening is when they when these they, they go to these false prophets, false teachers, false preachers, whatever, that are giving them what they want to hear to, to, to speak into the lust of their flesh, what happens? They turn their ears away from the truth and end up caught up in fables, in lies. And that's what we that's what we're dealing with in the church today. There's a veil of deception over the hearts and minds of people in the church that that uh, uh, they've rejected the truth and believed a lie. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of God to actually make them godly. And, and so they're they're living in this false reality, thinking they're on the way to heaven. And, and as Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord's going to end the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven, that you live for God. You, you please God. You serve God. You live to glorify God. You don't live for yourself anymore. You've been bought with a Christ. You've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ to glorify God in your body and spirit. You're consecrated and devoted to him. And, and it's all about God, doing God's will, doing God's purpose, living and dying for him. A amen. And, and, and so uh, Paul tells uh, uh, Timothy, be watchful in everything. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Every single one of us are called to be evangelists. Every one of us are called to share this gospel, to preach the word of God, to reach others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And like I said at the beginning, you know, even the even the national news is talking about the 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 the, 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 the decline in the church today. People are are leaving the church by droves. Churches are closing up every day. And uh uh, people are are leaving the faith. They're turning uh, apostate, just as Paul predicted in Second Thessalonians. That in the last days there would be a great falling away. There will be a great apostasy, whereby people turn away from the faith. And we're seeing it over politics, over these various issues, whether it's gay marriage or uh, homosexuality, and and uh, uh, some of these political issues, abortion. People are turning away from the faith. They're rejecting the word of God. They're, they're looking for uh, 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 aligning themselves with a culture that is wicked, that is evil. And uh, uh, all of these, these things, because, again, we haven't been preaching the, 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 the word of God. We haven't been preaching the full gospel of Jesus Christ. We haven't been preaching truth and bringing about spiritual growth in the lives of the people, making disciples. Disciples that 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 uh, are in the Word, that are in prayer, that are in private devotion, that are growing up spiritually to become ma spiritually mature and to do their part to to help build up the 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 the, uh, uh, the body of Christ by being a joint and a ligament that uses the gifts and the anointing that God has given each one to build up the church in love and to grow up into our head, Jesus Christ. We haven't been perfecting the saints for the work of the ministry. We've made it expect, a spectator thing rather than understanding that the church is everybody's a minister. Everybody's a priest. Everybody has a call in misery. We're to be raising them up to send them out. We're to be raising them up to do the work of the gospel. Listen, when you look at the statistics that are coming out now uh, concerning the, the generations coming up into the church today, it's, it's astounding. It, it's mind-blowing to, to, to see what these uh, uh, people today that are coming to the church believe and don't believe. It, it be because, again, we're not preaching the truth. We're not confronting them with these false ideas that they come with and, 
and they've been brainwashed in these schools and universities and all these uh, liberal uh, uh, people in the schools, even the religious schools that have become so-called liberals and progressives that don't that reject the true word of God. They don't believe in absolute truth. They they believe in this relativism. They 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 have all these false ideas uh, about Christianity. And, and we need to preach the truth or we're going to lose a whole generation of people. Listen to some of these statistics uh, that have been coming out. This comes from the uh, Cultural Research Center of Arizona Christian University. And uh, just, le just let me read you some of these. these uh, I'm going to quote from this study that they did about uh, uh, things that they're finding out among the people in the church. 58% of people who identify as Christians believe that the Holy Spirit is not a real living being, but merely a symbol of God's power, presence, and purity. 58% that believe they're Christians don't even believe in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and, and, and again, why don't they believe in the Holy Spirit? What have they been taught? What's being preached? Because you can't be saved without the Holy Spirit. You have to have the Holy Spirit to be a Christian. These are the things that's, that are happening today. Uh, uh, 176 million adults identify as Christian, and yet only 15 million or 6% actually hold a biblical worldview. In other words, only 6% of Christians in America, uh, out of 166 million people that claim to be Christian, only 6% believe in the biblical basis of Christianity, have a biblical worldview that they believe the Word of God, that they believe the things that the Bible reveals about creation, of, of, about uh, uh, what Christianity is all about and, and, and how we're to live in, in, in the kingdom of God, having this God view of the world and creation and everything about it, only 6%. I mean, that's mind-blowing. But again, why? Because they're not preaching the truth. They're not hearing the truth of God's word. And so uh, 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 they're, they're not growing up spiritually. They're, they're not understanding uh, what it means to be a Christian, what it should look like, what should happen. And, and again, most of these people have never been born again. They've never come into the full redeeming work of Christ and uh, come into that newness of life so that they can understand these things. Amen. 58% uh, believe that a person is good enough or does good things. They can earn their way into heaven. 58% believe they can earn their way into heaven. Again, why do they believe that? Because we're not preaching the truth. Listen, the only way into heaven is by repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. It's by grace through faith. You can't get into heaven by anything you do. And yet, and listen, I know this is true because I hear it from the mouths of Christians all the time when you're talking to them, when you have these relationships, especially when somebody dies or, or something happens or, you know, they're talking about somebody that's always doing these good works. And uh, that's the way they think because they do good things because they go out and, and, and feed the poor. They must be going to go to heaven. There's no way that they can not go to heaven because they're good people. They don't do this kind of sin and that kind of sin. They're always helping people doing good things. Doing good things does not get you into heaven. Listen, if you're saved, you should be doing good things as an evidence that you're saved. But they don't save you. They do not get you into heaven. There's only one way to get into heaven. It's to be holy. God doesn't save good people. He saves holy people. He saves people that have been born again by the Spirit of God that have repented and put their faith in Jesus Christ, understanding that we can do nothing. Anything we do is like filthy rags in the sight of God. Amen. If it's done of ourselves, the only thing to get us into heaven is Jesus Christ and our faith in Him. Amen. 72% of people argue that people are basically good. That, that, that goes right straight in the, in, against the, the word of God. The Bible tells us clearly we are all born in sin from the time of Adam and Eve. We are born with a nature of sin. We have a propensity to sin. The Bible talks about we sin from our very, very birth. In fact, 
if you if you study babies, if you study very young children, you'll see if you even isolate them from from television and from all kinds of evil and stuff like that, you'll find that they still will lie. They still will try to protect themselves. They still have a sense of guilt. Why? Because we all, we are all born sinners. Nobody is born righteous. Nobody is born free from sin. The only one was that was born from sin is Jesus Christ. He was born without a sin nature. Why? Because he wasn't born of man. He was born of the Holy Spirit. But all of us are born in sin. Nobody is right. In, in, in and of their selves. 71% considered feelings, experience, or, or the input of friends and family as their most trusted sources of moral guidance. And that's exactly what we're seeing wholesale across the world today. People are determining what's right and wrong, determining what's moral or immoral based on what other people tell them, based on, on friends or family or even the culture around us. And what's happening, we're fulfilling the prophecy of, Ab of, of Isaiah. We call good evil and evil good. Listen, there is only one standard of morality. It is God. He is the one who determines what is right and wrong. He is the creator. He's the one who formed us, who made everything. He only has the right to tell us what is right and what is wrong. Amen. And we have to submit to him. Amen. God defines sin. We don't define sin. We can't change the definition of sin. We've been trying to change it. You can't do it. God is God. He is the creator. He is the sovereign, almighty, king of kings, lord of lords. And when everything's said and done, he is going to rule and reign everything in creation. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Sin is determined by God and God alone. And he's given us his word so we would understand what right, what is right, and what is wrong, what is righteous, and what is not. Amen. So God has, has made that known to us. 64% uh, uh, 60, say that all religious faiths are equal value. <laughs> Again, what are they saying? They reject the truth of God's word. The Bible plainly tells us, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can come unto the Father except through me. Paul says, or Peter says, there, there is no other name under heaven given by which you must be saved but the name of Jesus. There, there is no other way. Jesus, God sent his only begotten son to die for our sins in order to make propitiation for us to make propitiation for our sins, to take away our sins so that we can be saved, so that we can be reconciled and brought back into relation with God. There is no other religion that can do that for you. Every other religion is based on works. It's based on your working your way into heaven. If you do enough good things, maybe maybe someday you'll, you'll do more than the bad things you've done. You, can, you have to understand that. There is only... One religion that can get you into heaven. Jesus Christ is the only way to get to heaven, the only way to the Father. 57% uh, believe in karma. God help us. 52% they claim that determining moral truth is up to each individual. There are no moral absolutes that apply to everyone all the time. <laughs> That's where we're living today. Everybody wants to be their own God. Everyone wants to determine what's good and what's evil for them and for everybody else. Everybody wants to, you know, uh, determine what's right or wrong based on what they think. There is only one moral absolute. It's the word of God. God's word is absolute truth. His word is truth. You can't change it. It's, in, it's unchangeable. In fact, the Bible tells us when everything else is said and done, when, when when the earth is 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 over, when the, you know God re, uh, 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 refines this earth with fire and and uh, everything is is gone, the only thing that's going to stand is the word of God. Amen. The word is eternal. It's unchanging. It, it's it's forever. It will never change. It will never go away. The word of God is absolute truth. And if you understand who God is, you you would you would understand that. Amen. Listen, God knows the end from the beginning. He's the Alpha and Omega. 
He, he, he knows everything in creation, even the things to come. He already knows those things. He knew that we would be here today. He knew everything about this generation. He knew about these times and seasons that we're living in. God's not surprised by anything that we do. God's not surprised. You know, we have this concept, well, we're so enlightened. This is the, you know, the 21st century. We're so enlightened. We we, we have so much greater understanding and wisdom and everything. And, and so, you know, we reject the word of God because that was, you know, that's, that's for people thousands of years ago. No, God, God made his word to supersede every generation from the beginning of time to the end of time. God word in his foresight is divine wisdom that applies to every generation, every person, every people, every group. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, where you live. The word of God is applicable to every single person in every place at all times. Why? Because it is unchanging, because it is absolute truth. And yet we have all these people that do not believe uh, uh, in these things. Less than half Believe that the marriage of one man to one woman is God's plan for humanity. Again, we want to be our own gods. We want to walk after the lust of our flesh. We want to have our own way. We want to live lives of sin and still get into heaven. And again, why are these things so? Because we're not preaching the truth of God's word. For, uh, uh, one third believe that pre uh, premarital sex is morally unacceptable. In other words, two-thirds of people that profess to know Christ, that believe that they're born-again children of God, do not believe in sexual immorality. They believe it's okay to live together with people. It's okay to have both of partners. It's okay to, to uh, uh, have sex before marriage. And, and again, we're seeing it all across the body of Christ. And yet, they believe it's okay. Why? Because nobody's preaching the truth of God's word. The pastors today are afraid to confront these issues because they might leave or, or they might lose money or something. We have the God to preach the word of truth. Why? Because you're not doing them any favors. They're going to end up in hell if we don't preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And their blood will be on the hands of those that refuse to preach the word of God and tell them the truth and confront them with the sin. Amen. Amen. Uh, only 28% believe that the best indicator of a successful life is consistent obedience to God. In other words, over 70% of people believe that success is determined by our obedience to God, our following God, our living a life unto God. In other words, they believe success is based on money, on things, on, on, on the things of this world, on, on, on all kinds of of, of attaining uh, the, just again the lust of the flesh. So again, we are we are living in a dangerous time, and it's time for the church. It's time for every single Christian to get back into the Word of God, to believe the Word of God, to receive the Word of God, and to preach the Word of God. That ministers, and, and again, all of us are ministers. Everybody must begin to preach the true Word of God, the whole Word of God, just like we see in the Bible. They didn't hold these things back. Jesus spoke the truth. Jesus, Jesus didn't ignore the sins of the people. He confronted them. Paul didn't ignore the sins of the people. He confronted them. He rebuked them. He preached the truth. He told you why. Because both Jesus and Paul said the same thing. Peter, John, all of them preached the truth. They confronted sin. Why? Because they knew if these people didn't hear the truth, if they didn't respond to the truth, they were going to end up in hell. They would not get into the kingdom of God if they did not come into a true born again experience and begin to walk out this life of obedience to God, to walk out a life of, that gives evidence that they've been born of God and that they now live a life dead to sin and alive unto God. They live a life of righteousness and they, they do the things that God has called us to do. Amen. So let me exhort you again. Second Timothy chapter four, verse uh, two. Let me, let me read this again. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. In other words, have the word in you. Always be ready to give a response to those who ask you. Always be ready to share the gospel to those that God brings across your path. Convince them, rebuke them, exhort them with all long suffering and teaching. Amen. Recognize the time is here 
they, they, that a lot of people do not endorse sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they heap up in themselves teachers that are do what? That are going to tell them what they want to hear. They're going to uh, just, just speak into the lust of their flesh, and they're going to turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But Paul tells us this, but you be watchful in all things, endure affliction, do the work of evangelists, and fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your calling. Make disciples. Preach the truth. Preach the word of God. Amen. Pray God, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you would move upon the hearts and minds of your people all across the body of Christ to get back into the word of God, to embrace the word as it is the word of God, not the word of men, but the word of God, which works effectively in those who believe that, Father God, we will believe that your word is true because it comes from your mouth. Every word that comes from the mouth of God is useful for us for, 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 for teaching, for, for conviction, for, for training, for righteousness, for truth. We need to embrace the word of God. And Lord God, we need to preach the word. We need to share the word of God. We need to confront the sin of the church. We need to speak truth into the lives of the people, Lord, that have been deceived, that are living in the sin, that, that are not showing forth the evidence of a true born-again experience. We need to care for them. We need to love them with enough love that will say, Go to your brother and confront him, show him the way, show them the truth, and lead them and guide them into the truth that will set them free and bring them into the full work of Christ so that they will not be lost in that day. Father, help us to be more serious. Help us to, 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 to be more obedient and to do what you called us to do, to preach the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Well, thank you for being with me. This is George Dello, Power for Today Prophetic Ministries. Let me encourage you, keep looking up. Your redemption draws nigh. We are one day closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you watching and waiting? Are you doing what God called you to do? Amen. God bless you. Love you. God loves you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. I'll be back Sunday morning at uh, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Uh, p.m. Eastern Time. You can join me for Bible study, for sermons, and uh, again, preaching the Word of God. God bless you and be with you in Jesus' name. Amen.